Hello and welcome to the online demonstration of Auto SLA Calculator for Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2011, both on-premise and online. A common requirement when implementing Microsoft CRM in a service environment is to be able to calculate the date and time by which a case or an incident must be resolved by in order to meet the agreed service level agreement. While out-of-the-box workflow allows us to add hours and days and minutes to an existing date, it has no concept of working hours or shift patterns. Another failing in the out-of-the-box workflow is that it, it can't return a duration or the number of minutes between two dates and it especially can't do this also taking into consideration working patterns and the number of working hours in a day. So the auto SLA calculator consists of two main records. Firstly we've got the auto SLA definition. So we can create as many auto SLA definitions as we like by going to settings auto SLA definitions. Here you can see I've created two definitions one which represents Monday to Friday 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. and a second one which represents Monday to Saturday 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. So if I take a look at one of these records I can see that in here we can set each of the seven weekdays to be either a working day or a non-working day. As we activate one of these days to be a working day we can then define the start time of the working day and the duration of the working day. So 9 till 5 will be a start time of 9 with a duration of 8 hours. We can also add exception records to these SLA definitions and an exception is used to identify a specific day or a portion of a day whereby we, we don't want to include it as working time. So here I've got examples of Christmas Day, Boxing Day and certain bank holidays for example. So the intention is each uh, year the administrator would add the following year's exception records to that or we could even add you know, a workflow to automate that to an extent. So once we have our auto definitions created I can then move on and look at an auto SLA request. An auto SLA request is, is a record that we create which takes into consideration the auto SLA definition but then allows us to pass a number of minutes, hours, days to add or subtract from a specific date that we pass to it. And typically we would use a workflow to create one of these records but there's nothing stopping uh, somebody out there actually you know, creating these records via the SDK using plugins or, or some other methods using script potentially. So if I look at a workflow that I've created, so here I've got one called Calculate Follow-up By. And in this workflow, it's quite a long workflow because I'm looking at the uh, service level of a case. So I've got gold, silver and bronze and then within each of those service levels I've got high, normal and low priority. So if we have a look at a, a, an auto SLA request record. So the auto SLA request record allows us to pass a name we can also select a definition record so in this case we're using Monday to Friday 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. we must pass a start date and time and that is the start date and time that the calculation will use in order to add or subtract 
the number of minutes, hours and days that we define within this request record. If we use an auto SLA request in this way, so we're passing um, days, hours or minutes, we will then get a date result once the plugin, which is associated with this auto SLA request record, successfully completes. So for example, if we create an incident or a case at five minutes to five and we create an auto SLA request which passes 30 minutes while using the 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. definition, then the result that we get back will be tomorrow at 9.25 a.m. We can also use the auto SLA request record in a different way. If we pass a start date and time and we also pass an end date and time, so for example uh, if a case or an incident is being completed and we have a completion date and time, we can pass both the creation date, the completion date and in return we will get the duration result and minutes results as well. So we'll get both the number of business minutes and the elapsed minutes between those two dates. And this can be extremely useful in terms of reporting metrics on cases and incidents especially so that we can monitor you know, the average amount of time taken to resolve a case or an incident. So let's take a look at this in action. So if I go and create a new case, I shall fill in my mandatory fields. And I shall select a gold service level with a high priority. And then I shall save the record. and we shall exit that, give it a few seconds because the workflow is running in the background to generate our auto SLA request. And we can see that now the time is 4.52pm, it's added 30 minutes um, and returned 9.22am tomorrow. And tomorrow happens to be a working day. So carrying on with this example, let's fast forward now and we are going to select and define a, a specific resolved on date and time. So I'm going to say I resolve this case today at uh, we'll go for 4.59 and save the record. And in this case, I've got a second workflow now, which generates an auto SLA request. And if I just uh, minimize this for a second, just to show the workflow. <clears throat> so this is the update metrics on case close workflow. So in here, we are creating an auto SLA request. We are then waiting for the plugin to finish executing, which is why we must have a wait step beneath every auto SLA request. Then once the results are returned, we can then update the case with the results. So just to have a quick look at the auto SLA request step. So I'm passing the created on and I'm passing the resolved on. And in return, I shall get the duration uh, both in business minutes and elapsed minutes. So back to the case and a quick refresh. So here I can see that I resolved that case in six minutes. Now because I resolved it within business working time, both the elapsed and the business durations are all six minutes. But if for example I'd resolved that uh, tomorrow morning at uh, maybe ten minutes past nine, 
then the business duration would be 18 minutes whereas the elapsed time would also include the the hours all the way through until 9 a.m. tomorrow so the elapsed time would, would be far greater from the business duration. So the fact that we can now gather uh, this information in terms of our durations and minutes that then allows us to determine whether the service level agreement has been exceeded and that would just be a simple uh, workflow to check whether the resolved on is greater than whatever you're using for the follow-up by or the SLA date. So we can use this data in order to visualize the performance of our help desk. So I've got an example dashboard here and here I've got a simple line chart which is showing the average number of business minutes taken to resolve each case by day. Uh, I've got a, a donut chart which shows me the percentage of cases where the SLA um, agreement is being exceeded and then some simple bar charts so I've got the top five customers by cases who've got SLA busts and also SLA busts by day as well. So hopefully this demonstration has given you a, a flavor of how the auto SLA calculator can help your business requirements around uh, the service and help desk or even just generating and calculating any date um, values which need to take into account the working time. If you'd like more information about Auto SLA Calculator, you can contact us by emailing solutions at gapconsulting.co.uk, contact us direct on the number shown, or you can visit the pinpoint.microsoft.com site, refine the results by application and search for Auto SLA Calculator. Alternatively, visit our website gapconsulting.co.uk where you can download a trial for free.